Hello, welcome to the 124th episode of the But I'm Knitting podcast. My name is Ramona. I'm a knitter from Toronto and welcome to my corner of the crafting world. Um, crafting this week went actually pretty darn good. Um, yeah, and I'm satisfied with everything that I did. I was like kind of contemplating. No, I am satisfied with what I did. I have a finished object. I have uh, three works in progress and I managed to put into work all three of them. Some of them not as much as others, but I still managed to put in the work. And then I also started two new pairs of socks because I finished one project. But there's a reason for the second one. So let's get started. So for my finished object, I finished my Musselberg hat. And here it is. I'll show it to you in its full format and then I'll try and stuff it back in again. So this is how it is when you finish knitting it. It basically looks like a big sausage casing by the time you're done, right? So I finished it and the plan was to have it so that, like how I showed it to you in the first, the first time, let me fold it back so I can get to show it to you, was to have it, uh, if I wear it with the gray and I fold the rim up, then I'd see the, um, it's actually easier to show from there. Yeah. If I wear it with the gray out, and I fold the brim up, you get to see the brim in the multicolor. It was supposed to be that if I flip it the other way, that I would see the gray as the, as the brim, but unfortunately, Mona did not measure as well as she thought she had. So now even if I do flip up, flip up the brim, it still does that, ah, didn't, do, didn't flip it up properly. It's still like this. So, some things that I have learned from this pattern. It is a good pattern. If you ever want a lot of vanilla knitting, like, and you're tired of knitting socks, but a tube works very well, this will do that for you. That will satisfy that itch. If you, just something to watch when you're like, watch something to work on while you're watching a movie or something like that. This hat will definitely cover that. So some things I've learned, um, for if it's myself, because this hat can't stay with me because it doesn't fit me. It's way too big. And I don't have the hair to support it, much to my dismay. I'll put up a picture of me as I had it on my head. Um, so the plan is I'm going to gift it to my dad. Because he did ask me many years ago to a hat and said a hat would be nice. I took that into consideration and then I promptly forgot about it. So I'm going to give him this. I don't know if the these colors will really work for him, but at the very least, he has the option of the gray right? If he wants to wear the brim up or not, that's completely up to him, but the hat's going to be his. So I'm going to give it to him this weekend when I go to his house. So let me take off my stitch marker before I forget and take that, give that to him with it as well. That's not a part of the gift. Okay, so this pattern is called the Musselberg hat by Isolde Teague, and I think it was a good pattern to get. I will definitely make it again, um, and I I think I cast, did I cast on the smallest one? Either, I'm going to do one of two things. Either use a smaller needle size or do the smaller cast on and with the same needle size and figure out which one will work best for me. So I definitely, definitely like that. So that is my finished object for this week. Oh, for the yarn that I used, I used um, the gray. They're both dyed by me. The gray is just a gray, and I think I was working with black to get this one. I just used as little bit of black as possible, and I think this is the lightest gray that I can get with that. And afterwards, for this one, it was like a kitchen sink mix. I just basically threw in whether, whatever colors I had, and I rinsed it, and this is what came out. So there it is. I still like the pops of blue. I think those are really cool. So that's the hat. Next, I guess we go on to the works in progress. So I will start with my fall garment knit along, which is the wool and honey sweater by Andrea Maori. Um, I didn't really put that much work into it. I think this is the product I worked the least on in the past week, but you know what? That's still okay because as far as I'm concerned, I still did a lot of work. So if I hold it up this way, I'm, I'm still on the yoke, still on the yoke. If you go by the pattern, she has a yoke part one and a yoke part two. I'm still on yoke part one. <laughs> This thing is not going to be ready for the end of November. There is no way it's going to be ready in time for the uh, for the knit along, but that, that's okay. So here it is so far still. It doesn't look like I did anything. But if you look on the back, um, 
I, yeah, that's where I was last week. So I added in a few more rows, maybe about five. Woohoo, progress was at the very least made, and I'm happy about that. So the yarn that I use for this is um, Retrosaria Mondine in the colorway 117. So, which is their dark gray color. I still need to work on it. And I kept saying, oh, I'm going to give myself like half an hour every day to put some progress in it. I, I need to stop making those promises to myself for this part because it, it, it never happens. Oh, I don't think I've ever shown this bag or if I have, it was a long time. This bag, I got this, I think it was last year. Um, the sewer behind it, her name is, or she goes by Creations by Uli on uh, Etsy. She also has an Instagram by the same name. I, I saw this pattern and as soon as I saw it, even though I don't like sparkles, I do want to go to Paris one day. That's been my dream since I was a kid. I, as far as I was concerned, that was the one beneficial thing of going to a French immersion school. It made me want to go to Paris. Hold on. I've been to Paris, Ontario. It's not as impressive. I need to go to Paris, France one day. <laughs> okay, so my next uh, work in progress is... Yeah, let's go with this one. My Three Leaf Socks by Paula Pereira. Um, I'm doing this for the... Oh, fall sock knit along. No, falling leaves socks knit along 2021, I think. Um, hosted by Denise from Earth Tones Girl. I am getting better at it. Um, so for this one, I promised myself that I would make it to at the very least the heel. Here it is at the front, and at the back, there is a heel. So I did the uh, the shadow wrap heel. It's always interesting just seeing it like on a virtually solid or variegated yarn where you can't really tell the difference. It all just looks the same. I'm not used to that. I think it's because I'm so used to doing my sock contrast um, heel cuffs and toes to not see any kind of contrast. And they're like, but but where am I in this? How far have I, has it been? But I took down notes so that from the very, so at least from the working on it from the front, I know exactly where to put in the heel when I get to the second sock. But I do like it. Oh, it's still great. Like, I even, I put it on my foot. I didn't take a picture of it, but it looks really good. I'm trying to see if there's anything that I could. And I ain't that flexible to try and flip my foot up over it. Let's try. Let's try this. See if you can get to see it better. See, if it was my leg, I could just put it all the way on my arm. But that's the patterning going on on it. Like, that looks great. And this is... I get, she divides it by um, right sock and left sock. So this is the right sock. It's only ever been tried on on my left foot because that's what I always try my things on first. I don't know why. But I am loving the way that looks. The yarn that I'm using for this is skein or shock. So this is the right sock. It's only ever been tried on on my left foot because that's what I always try my things on first. I don't know why. But I am loving the way that looks. The yarn that I'm using for this is Skein or Shine um, in her colorway, Grammy's Banana Bread. And yo, I love it. The speckles on it are so good. And it feels so soft. Like, really, it's just great. Other than the fact it's banana bread, it's great. <laughs> so I'm still on the first sock, but I've made it past the heel. So hopefully maybe by next week, I'm at least halfway up the leg. I make no guarantees, but that would be great. Because towards the end of next week, I'm going to have a slow down towards my knitting for at least a little bit. So trying to get as much done before I hit that day. Um, my next work in progress, progress is my Upper East Side hat, which apparently I did not put back in the bag. Hold on a second. So this is for the Hohi Garment Make Along. Um, I signed up and decided I was going to do the, um, oh, sorry, let me get this thing correct. Hohi Fall Knit Along 2021. There you go. Um, so I signed up to do one pattern, and the pattern I'm going to be, I did, is the um, Upper East Side. Because uh, you have to sign up in advance, and I did. I uh, will probably get, definitely get this done before the time is up. I, sh I should. Anyways, I'm on the second repeat. I haven't made it that far, but it's, it still feels like a good amount. So here it is. This is as far as I've made it. So you can see where the panda is, and then I, sorry, you can see where the panda is, and then I've made it up this much further. The yarn that I'm using is by Julie Eslin, um, in her Fino base in the colorway Keep Me. 
Um, I'm doing, it's a fingering weight yarn, so I'm holding a double because the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn. And when you don't have DK weight in your stash, you've got to find workarounds to make it work. So I'm loving the way that this is turning out. I cannot wait to wear it. This is probably going to be my winter hat for the year. So I think it's going to look great. Like, look at that. Isn't that good? I, I'm liking this pattern very, very much. So, um, cause I honestly, I didn't work on it that much this week, but then I did put in a few rows at one point. I put in another few rows today. Um, I think this might be what I work on for the rest of today. Yeah. I think other than my sock blankie, I think this is what I'm going to work on for the rest of today. Cause I'm enjoying this immensely. Oh, I am so loving it. It is great. Um, I don't remember. Let me see. Oh yeah, I remember now. I got this bag from Stitch by Jessalou, uh, maybe about five or so years ago. I don't know. I just know it's Star Wars. It's um, I was about to say Star Wars. That is completely totally wrong. Sorry. It's Doctor Who and Christmas. Um, and I thought it was hilarious when I saw it. Um, cause seeing like chibi versions of like Daleks and that kind of stuff really doesn't make them that scary anymore. <laughs> but then it has all of the different doctors on it and his assistants and um, or sorry companions. I'm not a thorough Doctor Who fan. I want to be, but I'm not. I didn't grow up watching it. I grew up here. And the first Doctor that I remembered was Christopher Eccleston. And the only reason I remember him was because he was on an episode. He was one of the characters on Heroes in season one. And his character was hilarious. So that's the only, and that's what sort of got me into Doctor Who. But I still like it. And one of these days I will watch out. I will catch up with all of the episodes. But I do know all, all of the Doctors up until the very last one. Her, I did not watch a single episode of her of her yet. yet but that's because it changed how our cable system worked out and suddenly we didn't get any sci-fi channels. So I like this feels very suspicious. You got rid of the sci-fi channels in my in my cable package when there was a female doctor. I don't know, but I have to find a way to actually get to watch a show like I want to. Uh, and I'll get to it eventually. Okay, so now my new cast ons. So I was supposed to wait until I had a finished project before I cast on anything else. That was the promise I made to myself. I ended up casting this on Thursday night instead. My hat didn't get finished till Sunday. So that, that tells you something. So was it this one? Nope, not this one. Sorry. Wrong project. This one? Yes, this one. This one, uh, I'm going to be trying to do this for the Spooky Sock Make Along. Um, there is one that's being hosted... I'm not exactly certain. Put it this way. I know who's hosting the one I'm thinking of. I know the one that I'm thinking of, but I cannot guarantee that. You know what? I'm just knitting them in the, like this. So they need to be spooky and they need to be Halloween-y. And honestly, the other option for um, another day along was a Hocus Pocus make-along. Here's the first problem. Uh, much to uh, my friend's dismay, I've never once watched Hocus Pocus. I knew Bette Midler was in it. Was it Bette Midler? Yeah, I knew Bette Midler was in it. And I think I kind of recognize that uh, one of the nuns from Sister Act and Sister Act 2 was in it. I didn't even realize Sarah Jessica Parker was in it. And I looked at like, how could you not know these things? I'm not a person who really is into Halloween other than the discount candy the next day. I don't know. Um, I don't really do horror because I'm a wuss. I don't mind the concept of vampires. I, unless they're Twilight vampires. I don't, I don't do that. But I never watched it. And even though I have a Disney Plus account, I think, well, no, it was earlier on this week. I started watching it and I made it about 20 minutes in. And I still got to go back and finish it. But either way, what I'm working on doesn't fall under the Hocus Pocus make along. It's a long story just to say, let me just show you what I've been working on. So for this one, the pattern that I'm doing is called the Twisty Staircase. I haven't made it that far in, and that's what I've gotten done so far. Uh, for the orange, this is just a yarn that I, I dyed up myself. I may have used it in something else. I'm not quite sure. It was probably a contrast color for something. And then for the self-striping portion, ooh, I really have to get work on this done. The self-striping portion, um, it's Area 51 Fibers in her Sturdy Aliens base. And the colorway is called Spooky Speckled Donuts. I love any of her food-based product ones. Mind you, I like any of her self-striping yarns. So 
it always works so i finally pulled it out i had gotten it last year for halloween and i had too much stuff i didn't cast it on at all which reminds me i got another one inside there a harry potter one that i think so that i have to i have to get on but um yeah and then the pattern is from dana ray makes um technically i could use this for the bipoc make along if i finish these by the end of this month um i'm not putting myself a rush on it necessarily to be a part of the knit along if i do that's great i'll i'll register it but i don't really care about that part of it but i do like dana ray's project um i do like dana ray's um Ooh, I feel like I'm missing out on words. I do like Dana Ray's patterns ever since, and it's the BIPOC make along that really got me into it. Um, so I already did her stack circle socks. So this is her twisted staircase, twisty staircase socks. And then there's a few more that are on my list that I've, I think I've downloaded maybe a few more that I really want to get, I want to do. So this, I really like this. Um, yeah. And afterwards, since I'm like showing off all of my bags, I might as well, because I realize I, I never do that. And then you start watching podcasts and people start talking about their bags. And they're like, oh, whoops, maybe I should do that. So this one is actually from, um, oh, I sh if I was going to do this, I should have gotten down the information off the top of my head. Oh, man, it was a it was a collaboration project. And I love her bags. I have, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'll put her name on, on the screen right there. But it was done in conjunction with Les Garçons. So they did them together. And if you look on the front, two of their um, their mascots that they've made are right there. And I got the pins for both of them because I like enamel pins. And then, actually, which one is this one? There? No, it's a different enamel pin. I just pulled this one up. Another enamel pin. I'm a very big fan of um, Le Gaussons enamel pins. I probably have a few that I need to um, go and get more of because that I've fallen behind on um, from purchasing. Nope, that's a stitch marker from them. I have a lot of them. Like, they're stitch markers. Can you see that? Their stitch markers are adorable. Oh, that's a good way to do it. So that's why people do it. Their stitch markers are adorable. And their enamel pins are really cute. I just love them. And then, of course, I, ha I heard about the bag, and I have to get that as well. Um, but then this is just a pin from y of Yoda. I got, um, I was at EB Games buying Animal Crossing cards um, maybe about a month. Has it been a month? No. Maybe? Maybe it's been about three weeks. And while I was there, I bought the Animal Crossing cards and then I saw this and I was trying to debate, should I, shouldn't I, should I? Ooh, there are three variations. How many of them should I get and end up leaving with one of them? So, yeah, it's not a Yo Baby Yoda. Sorry, it's a Grogu. So I thought that was very cute. And that's this project. Um, oh, one more thing for this. If you do have self-striping yarn, um, this is a good pattern for it. Because for self-striping, it's really hard to get a... Well, to me, it's it's hard to find patterns that will go well for self-striping. And this is one of the ones that I think goes very well. So. And next one. My last project that I'm showing to you is a pair of socks for... Well, it's not a pair of socks yet. It's like we're still working on the first one. Um, it's for a share pair. Um, I did a swap with someone in the UK through the Love & Stitches membership in August. August? Yes, in August. Um, so it took a while for everything to go through the post and all that kind of stuff and it finally and it finally arrived. I got mine first and it took a long time for them to send it in the post to her. I don't know why, but she did tell me that she got it. So I started on my um on my share a pair of socks. So these ones, it's just a two color stripe. Um K from Crazy Sock from the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. She was the first one I saw do these socks. It's very, it's a very simple pattern. Um, I don't know if she ever actually wrote it out, but I was able to figure out what she was doing. I might have listened to one of her videos where she happened to explain it. So that's what I decided I was going to do. So here it is so far. I love the colors. They look really, really pretty together, but it's a very big hassle to knit. Why? Because when you look up really close to these socks, especially when you're working on them, sometimes it's hard to tell which color is which and then you end up 
um, knitting an extra row. And it's not until you finish that third row that you realize, oh no, I went too far and then I got to tink it back in order to get back to that starting point that I'm supposed to be at. That's happened to me twice yesterday, um, both times while I was on a, a Zoom call with other knitters and it, it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, yeah. But I do love it. It looks so pretty. It remi I don't know. It makes me... Like, when you look at it from this, like, through the camera on here, it's easier to see it. And it just it just makes me want to continue it because that looks so great. It makes me think of, like, fairies for some reason. Oh, I don't remember... While I was given the information on a card with what each yarn that I got from uh, my, my swap partner were... I kind of lost the card. I got no clue. I just know the yarn is from somewhere in the UK. And that's for this one. This has got to be... Oh, if I can get a full skein of this, I would do it. I may just send her back a message and ask her if she can tell me where this one is from again. Because I really, really like it. Um, it's very soft. It would be really pretty for like, like a one-week pair of socks type of thing. It's just so pretty and dainty. That's what it makes me think of. Um, the yarn that I'm using, which has, you know, fallen out of out of method and everything. This is from um, Riverside Studio. I cannot remember the colorway name, uh, but I gave, I sent the other half to my swap partner and it looked much nicer than this. And then afterwards, this is the half that was left over. I don't think I rewound it. So it was really just loose. Um, so that's what I'm doing for that one, but it looks so good. It's just a two by two, um, color swap. That's it. So two rows of the one color, two rows with the next one with a two by two rib there. So I am liking that. I think this is going to turn out so nice. I'm going to be looking so, so forward to working on it. I should send a message to my swap partner to see what she's doing with it so far. If she started anything, but there was another pattern by Dana Ray and I cannot remember what it's called that she had released um, around the same time that I received my yarn. And it's like a, I just know there's slip stitches and it kind of looks like a checkerboard or, or, or a plaid design, which is what I'm gonna do with the other two skein, the other two skeins, cause we did a, a two 50 gram skein swap. So I'm gonna do that with the other one. I'm, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So that's this. And that is all of my FOs, whips and cast ons that I actually worked on this week. Um, so if you, uh, no, let's talk about the blankie first. So I put in my five squares for my blanket this week. I made sure I did them and they're turning out well. Um, I've been avidly making sure um, that I'm trying not to use too much things that are very much in the gray family because I realize now I have a section that looks quite gray. <laughs> and it's not like it's like the really, really light gray. It's just gray so those are like okay we need to put some color back in here so i'm trying to be a little bit more intentional with the with the mini skeins that i'm using for for as i go on try not to make it all too much of the same color as i work um so picture of the progress and yeah that's it for the blanket there's not that much um i made it to i finished 40 squares on it already that you that are in that that were in that picture um so Monday was 41, Tuesday was 42. So today I'm going to be doing my 43rd square. Um, so I'm almost at the halfway point for this challenge then, and I've done it every single day. Um, there's only gonna be a slight interruption coming up at the end of next week, which is gonna throw it off. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna do a square a, a day or two early in order to make it up to make sure that I saw have the same amount that's that's there by the time I'm finished. That's what I want because I've been doing so, so good. But I've also been looking forward to this procedure that I have to do, which is pretty much going to make it really difficult to see for the, for the, for, not for the foreseeable future, for at least a, a couple of days. It's going to be difficult to, to, to see the detail in order to be able to do it. I'm probably just going to want to close my eyes and sleep the entire time. So, um, if you look over here on my shoulder, over my shoulder, you will see, um, yarn that's been caked. It looks very pretty. And it's not just there for aesthetic purposes either. Um, on, was it Sunday or Monday? I think it was. So, yeah. So this is 124B. I guess would be the, probably the most accurate term. Um, so yesterday when I was talking, my video cut off. But it actually cut off a little bit sooner. But it was at a nice, you know, somewhat decent breaking point. And then my phone just decided to not 
work properly. So I've taken care of some of the problems, but we'll, let's just continue. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was what I decided to start doing on Sunday. So I was just flipping through YouTube and I realized Stephen West put up a documentary, maybe like eight minute doc documentary um, about, um, about his designs on shawls and that kind of stuff. There was lots of dancing, lots of shawl twirling and all of that kind of stuff. And about halfway through them, they're like, hmm, even though I have said for look how long, I am not going to be doing this make along. Maybe I should do this make along. So suffice it to say, halfway through, I went and I pulled out my stash because I said I wasn't going to buy any more yarn. By the end of it, I, I started watching the um, color matching or the color tut uh, yarn tutorial that he had. And that helped pick out the colors. And then I put them up on uh, the Rocker Socks Discord. And almost immediately they're like, yes, those colors are great. You need to do them. So suffice to say, right over here... <laughs> Those are the colors that I'm going to be doing for my for the um, for the new shawl coming out that he's doing. Um, which name suddenly skipped my mind. Hold on a second. It is shawlography. Yes. So those are my colors for shawlography. So uh, let's see if I can go through the colors and see if I remember them. I have everything on my uh, tablet here. So all right. On my shawlography, down here at the bottom, this is from uh, Red Sock Blue Sock from the Sock Adventure, um, from the Sock Adventure. So it comes with a mini skein. The mini skein is going to be going into the blanket. Not worrying about that. The color for this one is called Grape Jelly. This one here, this is from the Knitting Loft. Um, it's a beautiful navy blue. It was supposed to be going in my personal uh, Rainbow Sock collection. I'm gonna have to buy another one. So this is going in this in this shawl. Um, this one here is um, hold on the purple is uh, from um, Dells uh, from Les Garcons. Um, so this is his BFL um, and it's Roseanne first knit. This one here is dyed by me um, back in the day. Um, I call it Steel Blue. And up there is another one that I dyed myself, and I call it um, Palest of Grape. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, and because, of course, you need these, because to go with these, you need the needles, because you can't really work without the needles. I went hunting for needles. What I thought was a was the recommended side, which is a US 4 in the pattern, it's not. It was a size 8. I'm not going to tell them apart. I can tell a size zero apart from everything else, but I cannot be guaranteed for anything else. So I went hunting for the needles that I do have. And from what I could see, they're all attached on projects. So I figured this would be a good time to go over what I have for work in progress shawls that have been there forever today to the point that I kind of forgot that I even own them. So let's get started on that. All right, so my first one... This one I'm just showing you because it's my absolute favorite shawl. I don't wear shawls, but I don't want to give this one away. Um, this one is the Hadai Shawl by Isolde Teague. And this was my first foray into a shawl that I actually liked. Like, yeah, this is the first one that I really, really liked. I had gone to... It wasn't Yarns Untangled. This was the store that was in the spot of Yarns Untangled before Yarns Untangled. I cannot remember what it's called. But um, I tried, the yarn that I used was Mindful Wool Project, uh, Merino DK Singles, in the colorway Gilded and Werther's Original. So this is the Werther's Original color right here. Mm. And then this is the Gilded colorway. So for this one, the, to me, the construction was interesting because most of the time when you work on shawls, you either start from like one corner and increase your way out or you start at the biggest part and work your way in. So this one, um, the starting point is, was it? Yeah, this is probably it. It was probably over here. And basically what you do is you knit this entire band going down the cable all the way down and around to the end you know as you do and then afterwards you pick up the stitches 
down here and go and follow it all the way across and then you basically work and close it in so i love this shawl this is one i'm not willing to get rid of even though i don't wear them so it decorates the back of my chair all the time so this one is not a work in progress this is a finished object that has been finished for years i just love it and i want to show it off um so the other one that i have on the needles and i've had on the needles for quite some time is the vulpix shawl by stephen west um i can't remember if it was a paid pattern or if it was a free pattern at the time either way it had uh something that i really liked which is pokemon so i never finished it it's still on needles it's still on the us size four needles hold on a second and i love the yarn but you know what every time i look at it i'm kind of yeah as much as I love the project, I don't really care that much. But the thing is, I've put in a lot of work to this. Oh, whoopsie, the yarn just fell. So it's like one of those, do I give up the hard work that I've done? Or do I just pull it out and get my needles free? Or do I just, I don't know. So this is it so far. Like, I, I always end up making it a good chunk of the way through the project. And I just don't finish it. Like, I love... I love the design going down that. I think that is beautiful, right? The yarn I'm using is by Penguin Soup. I'm not sure if she really dyes anymore. She used to. I love her stuff. Um, so this is the um, Penguin Soup Royal Merino, which is like, it's got cashmere in it, I believe. And the color is colors for this one are Slave and White Fall. So it's got like these lines going through it. Like if you want a very easy, I think it's easy. For Stephen West, this is easy. There's no brioche involved in it. No cables. It's just, you know, some slip stitches. Is there slip stitches even in this? Yeah, there's some slip stitches and that kind of stuff. It's it's not it's not terribly difficult. I just need to actually finish it. I've got to figure out where the pattern itself is because I looked inside the bag and it's just there. The needles. I had to go hunting for the uh, yarn because one was attached, the other one wasn't. So that means I'm working primarily with one color. I need to, I actually do think I want to finish this. I really do. Um, so, because literally this is what I have left for one of the balls, like this much. It's not like I have a lot of that left. And the other one that's still attached to the project, I have this much left of it. And then for penguin soup, if you ever get to find her again, it's this one. Yeah. I think I do want to finish this one. Hmm. All right, let's move you over. Next one of the shawls that are works of progress, I'll probably have my US4 needles. So this one, which one is this? Okay, so this one is The Spark of Grey by Melanie Berg. Um, this was years ago that I started this one as well. And this one probably has the needles that I really, really want on it. Um, because these are my Lique size 4 US needles. I like using these for shawls. Whenever I do shawls, I really like using these for shawls. Um, and the shafts on these ones don't cause problems. It's the smaller ones that usually do for me. But... Here's the pattern so far. It's cool. I like it. I'm probably still not going to wear it, but I think it's cool. But I think the thing that I liked most about it was the fact that I was using my own yarn to do this. My own yarn that I dyed myself. Um, let's see. This is... Yeah. It's not quite black. It's a bit close to charcoal, but... That uh, was one of them. And then this very, very bright yellow that is falling out of its little yarn cozy bag. It's like, <sighs> how did an audacity fall? That's what it is. And see, for this one, I was smarter about it. Hold on. I still have the yarn. I have my little tracker on it. So if I want to, I can pick this up exactly where I started from, where I left it off.
This is actually quite possible. While, while looking at it, it's quite possible to get this thing finished. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do this. It's just that I'm currently working on um, uh, 479 stitches all the way across. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. But, yeah, I think if I want to, I can finish this one. I'm not willing to give this one up either. <laughs> this is basically, I guess I'm looking through this and I'm, it's like one of those, does this spark joy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm not giving this one up. Okay, and then the last one. Okay, this one was supposed to be a knit along with some of, hold on. Did I get myself? Oh, okay. All right. I got another one here that I did not even realize I had. Okay, well, let's start with the one that I that I planned for. This. This is a pop. Sorry, now I need to just double check. No, this is definitely this is a pop. Is it? Sorry, I gotta check this again. This is, because I got another one here that I thought was something else. Oh, okay, now I got it. All right, I know which one I'm talking about now. So this one here is the Sizzle Pop. This was a knit along that some of the ladies from um, the Knitting Loft um, not that work in the knitting loft, who um, frequented the knitting loft, who was a part of like the knitting group that would meet there on a regular basis. Um, and if I remember correctly, Bruna uh, asked me to, you know, suggest that I did it. And I said, you know what, I'm not good with brioche, but this would be a good opportunity to learn how to increase and decrease. And for some reason, a hat didn't occur to me. But here's what I have so far for that on this side. Like, I really do like this. And if I ever do finish this one, it would be mighty impressive to me. Because um, I think the technique is what I'm really liking about it. But I am willing for this one to move it to a different set of needles and just hold on to it for a while and not worry about it. Um, I had gotten, sorry, the yarn that I got for these, these are both from Chelsea Lux. Um, she had done a... Um, a trunk show at the knitting loft and it was on a friday but thing is guess what friday during the day was my day to go to the knitting loft i knew she was coming but i didn't expect how jam-packed that place would be and this is before they had the expansion so it was a bunch of people squashed into a small area and i swear you'd you'd think like beyonce was walking through the store that's how excited people were to see chelsea lux so these are the two that I got, which are right here. Um, this one is favorite, le favorite Leather Boots. And then this one, the colorway is called Tin Can. And yeah, the yarn for that, it stayed pretty good. I think, yeah, so far I could say that this is the one that I would switch needles on to use the needles for the Stephen Wash shawl. I do like this, but it's not, it, it would be an interest. It just seems like it would be interesting to work on, but I'm not that inspired to work on it. I love the yarn and I love the brioche, but it's not really something else I really want to work on right now. So I'm going to leave that one there. And the other project that I completely forgot that I had even picked up and brought over, um, hold on, who's this bag by again? Cause I got this bag from the loft but I'm not seeing a name on it. I don't remember who made this. I do not remember who made it, but I love it anyways. Um, so this is the Chrysalis, My Chrysalis Shawl by Lavanya uh, Patricella. Um, for this one, you may have seen it on one of the many, on one of the earlier episodes of the podcast. So now you know, I haven't lost it. It's still here. <laughs> Um, I don't even know what yarn I have for it or anything because I literally just picked it up and I didn't even remember that it was there when I was writing out my notes for this. Oh. oh, I made it a good way through this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I made it a good way through this. So this is it. 
I can't really stretch it out more because I'm not, my wingspan's not that great. This one, this is like Knitter's Pride needles. So, yeah. It just gathers around. I can't show it off properly. And let's see what Yana was using for this. I don't know. I don't have the labels. Did I write it down on the pattern? Sometimes I did that. When I actually printed out things. Um, I can just tell you what the colors are. The This color is called um, Kodak. I don't know who the dyer is behind it. No clue whatsoever. And then this one is Anything for Love. Still don't know anything about it because I wrote down the color names so I could keep track of what was A and what was B. But then I didn't write down the actual brand of yarn I was working with. Oh, that's just annoying. Hmm. How far did I get in this thing? Hmm. No, I got pretty far. I did that. Okay. I'm about at row 183. Still possible. We'll have to see. Maybe one of these days I'll just surprise myself and do it. This one I don't really mind as much. I don't really like Want, I'm not rushing to get the needles from these ones because I'd rather use my uh, leak my leaking needles for the shell. So I believe this is actually the end of the podcast. Um, let's see, just trying to think if there's anything else that's happening. Um, this week up here in Canada, it is Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to be spending the weekend at my dad's house. Uh, my brother will, my brother, his wife, and his daughter, aka my niece, my lovely niece, will be coming over on the Sunday for dinner. Um, that's when they're coming. I'm going over from tomorrow night. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I love hanging out with my younger siblings and my dad and my stepmom. Um, and I'm anticipating to have a grand old time. Um, yeah, that that's, that's, there's that. Uh, huh. Next week, I have I will definitely be doing an episode. That will be episode number 125. Um, it's the week afterwards I'm not too sure about. Um, I have, um, that's because next week, Friday, I have an eye procedure coming up. Um, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to recover. Um, because I do remember talking about it with the optometrist at some point. Was it earlier on this year? Yeah, it was earlier on this year, and um, he told me that if I get this procedure done, I'd prob it could be like a good week or two weeks that my eye could be like, you know, stay away from like the bright lights and the screens and that kind of stuff. I don't know. I have not anticipated exactly what's going to happen with that. So we'll have to see. Um, and, you know, considering <laughs> a lot of what I do is on a screen in general, it, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Um, so not next week, but the week afterwards, there may not be an episode um, for that week. I haven't quite decided as to what I'm going to do. It all depends as to how I feel, uh, you know, after the procedure. Because um, it's like something I got to do with my eye. I'm really scared. I, like Anything that involves an eyeball, I... <laughs> Mm. There are horror posters that freak me out that I used to see on the TTC all the time. I can't even remember what horror movie it was, but it was a big giant eyeball and then there was a hand coming out of it. And it, oof, mm -mm. those things are creepy. I don't understand how people can watch them, but eh, that, that's just not me. Um, let's see, anything else happening? Oh, well, one thing that happened yesterday after, you know, the whole crashing system on my, uh, on my phone and stuff like that. I had something I had ordered arrived and I was so excited. It was a um, ball winder, um, but it was one of those wooden ones. And I've always wanted one of those, but me being cheap, decided to get it through Amazon and did not. And I should have listened to the negative reviews on it because when I got it and I tried to, uh, to wind it, cause I set everything up exactly like how they said, even though they said that there are two other parts that, didn't show up anywhere in the box. Um, but when I watched the video for it, cause I even went on YouTube to try and figure out if there was something missing about the way that I was setting it up. But even on the one that I had, the video I had watched on YouTube for that specific model and all that kind of stuff, those items weren't there. So I'm like, okay. But 
I'm going to put up a picture of what it did to my yarn. Um, so I tried it once. It looked bad. I tried it twice, like trying to reverse it and seeing if maybe um, doing it in counterclockwise as opposed to clockwise to see if that would work. That didn't do anything. Um, and I just really got mad at the thing. I could not figure out what was wrong. Um, I was with, I was on a Zoom call last night with other knitters and one of the ladies, Rowan, thank you so much for the help that you were able to provide. She even looked at it. She's there like, no, it looks like you did everything like what you were supposed to, but that thing is supposed to be the, um, the spool is supposed to be moving faster than what you're turning. And I'm like, that's what I thought because as much as I don't like my other one, it works but it moves at like at least twice the speed to get the yarn wrap, wrapped around properly to get it to do this and that ball winder did all of these and it did it okay it didn't turn out like how the other one did so i basically um checked the amazon return policy put everything back in a box they printed out the shipping label and today thursday i went to the post office and i sent that thing back i am not keeping it there's no point um so instead of trying to be cheap about it i should just save up money and buy a decent one because i do know they exist because if i could because honestly i just want to upgrade what i already have i like my um my swift but i want one of the umbrella swifts because sometimes i end up with skeins of yarn that are bigger than the size of my swift but if i get a umbrella swift that means I can stretch it out as wide as I need to to accommodate the yarn um and with the ball winder it would just look so much nicer and I like the fact um because I was already thinking of different ways to improve the ball winder that I had gotten from Amazon like it needed something to stop it from moving on the table that was the first thing so I was thinking okay I can just buy some of the some grippy stuff and just you know literally stick it on the bottom and so it won't move as much but then the other problem was you couldn't move where the um, where the yarn guide was, which I've realized becomes very important. Um, and yeah, that was that was not a fun thing for that. And yeah, and the, and the, the the speed of the of the of what the the cone was on is it was just horrible. But like there are other things that could have been done to it. But you know what? Eventually, I will figure it out and I'll get something that I like. Um, I'm going to have to look into it and see what I do. Okay, that's going to be everything for today. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.